Media Day in Athens is a surefire sign that football is coming. Media Day was Friday at Peden Stadium. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Rob Cornelius joins me. 2017 Ohio football is getting close, and the coaches and players got to meet with us media types on Friday afternoon. Yeah, learned a bunch today from some of your top players, your coaches, your coordinators, and kind of got a feel for where this season's going on both offense and defense. Ohio tries to pile on to last year's 8-6 finish. Yeah, we'll take a look at it, and we'll go inside the X's and O's a little bit here. We last joined you up at Canton at Media Day. We broad stroked it there, but let's dive into it. This is an offense that feels that they need to be better. They average 26 points per game, 390 yards of offense per contest, but this is a crew that feels that they left some yards and points out there. They really did. They need to be more efficient, get more out of their drives. And the question becomes, if this becomes a run-heavy team and you pace down, every possession becomes more important. You're still going to be able to run with the teams that want to go out there and throw 80, 90 players on the board. It's an interesting league and interesting season for that purpose. 13th year head coach Frank Solich has identified some key areas where they need to improve. And that comes back to offense, defense, um, special special teams. You know, we've uh, we've got to uh, be able to pick up more first downs. We've got to keep possession of the ball and keep marching down the field. Um, we've got a great punter. We don't want to have to utilize our punter as much as uh, what we did um, last last year. Defensively, we got to get more three and outs. You know, we, we got to establish field position by not letting them get first down, first down, first down, and then bringing them up short of, uh, of getting points on the board or settling for them getting three points um, on, on the board. So getting better in, in those areas, getting better in the red zone, uh, both offensively and defensively, getting better on third down, um, all those things play, uh, play into it. Frank is four victories away from 150 in his overall coaching career. If he has 12 wins this year, that's 100 at Ohio, and that 12 wins would be a tremendous season. Incredible lift would be the best Ohio season in a very long time since 68. You're right. Last year, this team thinks 11 wins were possible. They end on eight. Big picture, they think they can do a lot better this year. So the, the question is, was it play calling? Was it execution? Was it uh, a combination of the two? We visited with uh, offensive coordinator Tim Albin, and he said, yes, it was both. You know, Coach had talked about um, time of possession, running the football, taking care of the football. You know, th those three things, those three elements right there are going to determine 90% of the games. And the last two games, the turnovers, we had eight, I think, in the last two ball games. Um, one of the gentlemen asked a question on number of passes when it was lower, you know, and that, that relates directly to rushing yards. I mean, we, we win the ball well, play actions are set up, and we're not as many, not as many show passes. Uh, the bowl game, a lot of show pass, you know, um, against a very good front seven. So, but, and, and then along with those things, uh, play calling. You know, I mean, I'll, I mean, I hate it. It is what it is. Um, I got to do a better job. Put our guys in position to to make plays um, and get get keep drives alive offensively. And the thing is, from Tim Alvin and this and this staff, you now have two running backs, two bell cow types, and Dorian Brown and AJ Oled. If they're both healthy, they can give you 25, 30 carries a game if need be. So you can slow down, slog it out, and go to a low possession kind of game and dominate with what they think is going to be a very good offensive line as well. And the real interchangeable piece here, is he a running back? Is he a wide receiver? Poppy White, who had nine touchdowns last year, six through the air and three on the ground. Who is he? Running back, wide receiver, both? He's a guy you put everywhere. You throw him in the slot, you throw him in the jet sweep. You want him to have him on the field every play and maybe even moving every play to show the other side what's going on, see where the linebacks and safeties are moving. Big picture, he's a guy you have to count for every down if you're a defense. That helps Ohio get other guys like Brendan Cope free. Yeah, we haven't talked about the quarterback position yet. And Quentin Maxwell was the guy that appears to be the number one guy moving forward, and that's pretty good for a sophomore. Last year had eight touchdowns, four interceptions, right around 1,200 yards, but didn't play in every game. Yeah up and down. Definitely did not start some of these games with fantastic some outings. He has some questions about his own tape and the others. These guys worked hard. He's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. gotten faster. Guys lift their way to prominence here at Ohio and he's another great example. Yeah, everybody likes each other in that quarterback room, but he feels that he needs to approach it as him being the number one. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a um, competitive position. Um, there's only one guy that can play and uh, everybody in that room knows that. Um, we're all, at the end of the day, we're all in this together. Everybody in there just wants to win, wants the best for the team. But in each one of our minds, we all got to say, hey, we want to be the guy. We are the guy for this offense. And uh, I just try to go in, do the best that I can, uh, manage the offense, and take care of what I can control. And uh, 
let the chips fall where they may. And this was an offense that knew that the defense was going to be there for them if they didn't score as many points as they wanted to. That D was a big-time benefit to that offense last year and hopefully can be again. Yep, top quintile, top uh, 25 or so in defense yeah. total, top five in rushing defense and yards per game, and most of the season they sat second, second in the whole country at yards per carry defense. You haven't seen a rush defense this good in this league in a very long time. Yeah, I gave up 22 points per game last season and 360 yards on average. Quinton Poling had a tremendous season, 110 tackles. He had three quarterback sacks, but he feels there are some things he can get better at and be even better. Absolutely, he can always get better. I mean, there's a lot of you know, tackles I missed, which was um, something I'm really looking to clean up on this year. Uh, some sacks I could have added on, been in not really a blitz, but just additional pressure when I have like a running back man, he's blocking a blitzer. So there, there will be opportunities for me to increase my production. For Quentin Poling, really Russ, part of the issue as well, playing with some new linebackers and guys right. around him, how free will he be able to play? He was so wild last year, able to go all over the field, look for the sacks, look for the interceptions. How freely will he play in the middle and then behind him, Javon Hagan? Now that he has some more senior help around him, how freely can he play at safety? Two big question marks, but positive question marks. Yeah, there are a lot of things that have been proven. There are a lot of unknowns, but you're going to have that here. And the good thing is that some of those unknowns that we've had in the past have come up and have surprised people. The depth and the recruiting, that's when that comes in. And 2017 is going to show some of that. Yeah, and they love this freshman class. You don't know how many red shirts will get burned here in this first couple weeks, first month of the season after fall practice, but they think they have talent here and some of these guys absolutely will play. Can the defense be as good? Can they be even better? Can the offense put more points on the board? We didn't even talk about special teams where you have Louis Zervis who had, what, 29 field goals last year. That is an NCAA freshman record for place kicking. Yeah, the short version. They love their punter. They love their kicker. They don't want to see him work as hard. Yeah, well, we love them all, and, and certainly we'd, we'd love to see the offense score points, the defense limit, and have a whole lot of wins. Bottom line, it's getting close. September 2nd, we'll be here before we know it. Yep, under three weeks away to this season. A lot of practice, a lot of work to do, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you every Saturday this fall. September the 2nd, Ohio and Hampton, and think about making that trip for that Friday contest up at Ross 8 Stadium at Purdue. Tickets will be available, and hopefully Ohio can snag a Big 10 and Big 12 win in the same year. Yep, unique. Purdue, Kansas coming up in month one. Tough conference game with Eastern Michigan. And on the road at UMass weeks one through five. we got a lot of work to do. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks, Rob. Enjoy. All right. With Rob Cornelius and Jason Chapino, I'm Russ Eisenstein. That's coverage of Bobcat Media Day from Athens. This is Bobcat TV.